Welcome to my lecture for the STOM Academy on digital denture workflows for edentulous scanning workflows. You're going to really see a deep dive into what is possible today with intraoral scanning and digital technology. I hope that you find a wealth of knowledge and understanding inside of this interactive lecture. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the program. My name is Eric Kukuchka. I'm a denturist, key opinion leader and consultant for many dental companies around the world. I've been doing digital dentures for, it'll be seven years in September. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today. It's an honor and a privilege to have traveled all over the world talking about this technology. And we're gonna talk a lot about that today. We're gonna deep dive into the workflows. We're gonna talk about different manufacturing methodologies. We're gonna talk about different ways of treating patients, different types of scanning technologies. We're gonna talk about everything related to digital dentures. So I wanna welcome you to what most people consider the future, but really is the reality and it's today, right? Digital dentures is not something new. So just to go over the agenda with you, we're gonna discuss removable prosthetics. We're gonna deep dive into the workflows. You're gonna really see the workflows here of digital dentures and how they work. And I'm gonna go through some clinical case presentations. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this presentation and everything that I'm gonna show you with respect to digital dentures. So terms of use and disclaimer, this webinar and all contents therein, whether visual or spoken is proprietary and provided for informational purposes only. No viewer should act on the basis of any material contained in the webinar without attaining proper training materials, equipment, and or certification. If you are on social media, please connect with me. Whether it is on Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it is Instagram, my learn platform, my online education platform on Instagram, connect with 3Shape as well, and use my hashtag Trios Dentures. If you have a Trios and you're doing digital dentures, please feel free to use my hashtag Trios Dentures. But please connect with me on social media. I'd love to get to know you and I'd love to see you active and sharing all of the posts and things that we're doing with digital dentures. The time of digital is now. It's not yesterday. It's not last month, it's not tomorrow, it's not next month, it's now. And that has never been more prevalent than today when we look at what digital technology, not just in dentistry, what digital technology is doing around the world since the unfortunate global pandemic. We look at things like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Team Viewer, right? Apple FaceTime, right? all of these things that are revolutionizing the way that we communicate. Let's talk about right now. I'm giving you a lecture from my office in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. All over the world, you're able to watch this as if we are together. Never before really were we doing pre-recorded webinars or live webinars. Technology is changing and the time of digital in all aspects of dentistry, it is now. Patients are more savvy. Patients are more understanding of technology. I can't tell you how many patients I have that have iPads, iPhones, iWatches, and not just to single out Apple, but it does show you that Apple has been able to create a diversified market to the geriatric population. Right? My father never wanted to have a cell phone. Now he has iPhone, he has Facebook, right? So we have to look at that and understand the same thing for what we do in dentistry. There was a study done that showed 50 million removables are produced per year. 50 million. And that's just the recorded numbers, right? Less than 3% of those dentures are digital. Less than 3%. So that just goes to show you that 97% of the dentures made today are still analog or conventional. Less 
than 3% are digital. And one of the biggest factors and numbers that we've seen in our practice is we've been able to reduce post-operative adjustments by 78%. Okay? That's a very powerful number. We're also doing a new clinical study that's going to evaluate the amount of appointments it takes, the type of restoration we're manufacturing, the scanning uh, system, as well as the workflow. But this study here that we did showed a decrease of post-operative adjustments by 78%. And that's a big number. But when we look at removable prosthetics, dentures, right? These patients are treated unfairly. Okay? All over the world, unfortunately, removable prosthetics are not looked at as cool or sexy or, you know, a hot topic, rather. It's always been, eh, it's just a denture. Just make a denture. Who cares it's a denture, right? And that's what's happened. And there's a, there's a reason behind that. And there's many, rather. But let's talk about the most important one. We're trying to recreate nature inside of this black hole, black space, right? Following anatomical and physiological landmarks, anatomy and physiology, right? And principles of denture fabrication. But we also, as a dental technician, has to try to bilaterally balance 28 or 24, depending on your occlusal scheme, individual carded teeth on blocks of wax, right? Have you ever thought of that, okay? Using landmarks like two-thirds up the retromolar pad, central ridge points, center of the ridge, canine points, incisive papilla, right? To create a set of teeth. And it's very challenging to do something like that. Especially when they walk in with nothing. Not when they walk in with something, right? There's a lot of information there. Good, better, bad, or indifferent, there's a lot of information. And we can make these people very happy. And I'm just gonna go back for a moment. And I, I really want you to see the difference in this patient's in her eyes. Look at the difference from the final restoration even the difference between that and the interim restoration, right? She's a very happy person. And that's good, restorable facial restoration, right? Big, big, big difference. And wearing dentures is a handicap. It doesn't matter which way you look at it. If you wear dentures, it's a handicap. So sometimes we need to slow down and reflect and find the right reasons as to why, right? Why do these patients live like this? And a vast majority of the time, it's directly related to what we call fear. False evidence appearing real, right? And we all have fear. Right? You could see all the things laid out here. The news, coronavirus, health, retirement, weight, money, right? health care, right? uncertainty, reality. Right? We all have fear. But very often, fear is false evidence appearing real. And when we look at these patients, these patients all have fear, fear of dentistry, fear of the unknown, right? Fear of pain, right? Fear of dentistry. And that's where a lot of the dentalist patients come from is the fear of dentistry and terminal dentition patients as well. Sure. You could say it's just neglect, not necessarily true. A lot of it's fear. And when we look at what we can do with removable, we can really change these patients' quality of life. We can give them back that vitality. We can give them back that purpose, right? that sense of being, 
a human being. Right? Very, very important. But I'll ask this question of why is, then why the doubt? Why the doubt about removable? Why the doubt about digital removable? Is it the long-term success that you doubt? Do you have a bad first experience? Lack of information? Or fear, right? False evidence appearing real. Right? We all have fear. Maybe you fear digital technology. Right? So let's talk about why digital, right? Because it's cool, because it's the new thing, right? Now, there's a lot of reasons as to why digital. And when we look at why digital, let's talk about reduced chair time. So if you can reduce your post-operative adjustment, you're gonna reduce chair time. If you have more innovative workflows that allow the technology to replace some of your human activity, you're reducing chair time. If you could do workflows instead of five or six appointments and do it in three or four, you're reducing chair time. Strength. Depending on your manufacturing methodology, digital dentures are stronger. Milled monolithic dentures. Less tooth movement, right? But these dentures are stronger. They're homogenous. They're pre-polymerized polymethamethacrylate material. As I mentioned earlier, better workflows, right? More predictable workflows. Not like in the past with conventional. Electronic preservation. Think about how much time and energy you spend in a five or a six appointment workflow to rehabilitate that patient. Now imagine two years later, patient loses their lower. After you've done two or three adjustments on it, you've taken six or seven appointments, multiple try-ins, they were finally happy, and then they lost it. Imagine that today, just reproducing that file and milling the exact same denture, right? We've sent multiple dentures. We have a lot of our patients that uh, travel to Florida for vacation, and we've sent dentures overnight to a dental office, and they've been there and got them inserted, all because it was digital. Revolutionary. Better quality materials, pre-polymerized, 100% homogenous PMMA materials. Better retention. Because of the trueness and the accuracy in the manufacturing process as well as the scanning process, renders more trueness and accuracy. Uniform thickness. Right? We can make that denture base 2.25, 2.5, 2 millimeters, 3 millimeters in the lower, 3.25, make it thicker for an implant restoration, right? Uniform. The way that that palatal vault feels for this patient, uniform thickness is absolutely incredible. Accuracy, right? Consistency. Consistency of bilateral bound seclusion, consistency of uniform thickness, consistency of improved retention and stability, okay? Consistency. Let's look at some consistency. Let's look at the same denture reproduced on the Progamil PM7, rendering results plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeter. Same denture, milled three times, right? Incredible. Could you, let's go back. Could you make the exact same denture by hand three times and be within 0.1 of a millimeter? No, you can't. Because you're conventionally processing, conventionally setting the teeth by hand, carving the teeth by hand, all of these things that we can do digitally, that cannot be done conventionally, unfortunately. When we look at accuracy, 
Right? We talked about that earlier in Y Digital. Right? This is a study that was done by Dr. Goodacre, Brian and Charlie, uh, Dr. Nadim Baba, and many others that compared pack and press fluid resin, injection molding, and CAD CAM milled. And you can see utilizing this software, the differentiation between the intimacy, the accuracy, and the trueness of the denture base between each other, right? And aligning that to the impression. Because that's what they did. They did this comparison to show, right? Why do we do a post dam in conventional? Right? To compensate for polymerization shrinkage. Well, if you're milling a pre-polymerized puck, you don't have polymerization shrinkage. What about denture tooth movement? Look at pack and press, right? Fluid resin injection versus CAD CAM bonded and CAD CAM milled. And surprisingly enough, CAD CAM milled showed the most accuracy and trueness, right? What about the strength, right? We look at segmentations or the strength of these digital dentures and comparing them to artificial teeth, right? When we say artificial teeth, it means carded teeth. So when we look at artificial single teeth, so individual carded teeth bonded to a milled base, we're also looking at three separate arches. Then we look at two separate arches, and then we look at a monolithic arch, right? Look at the fracture patterns, right? Carded teeth, fracture at the midline. The three tooth segments, it fractured at the canine points, right? Two segments at the midline and very much the same for the full arch, but look at the difference in Newton centimeter force it took to fracture carded artificial teeth versus milled monolithic, almost two times the amount, right? Now, why would two segments break easier than three segments. Reason being, because two segments you're gonna break right down the center. Three segments you still have three different areas holding their strength as well. So the two segments really it does create a weak point right down the center. And you need to have a good bond material. This is the Ivotion bond. This was a study done that showed that all fractures during this test were done are rendered cohesive results, cohesive fractures, right? So it's not an issue of the bonding material not bonding to the polymath and the thacrylate, right? Or the composite resin, right? It's cohesive fracture. So the interface and the intimacy of the bonding material to the, to the intaglio of the tooth or the basal surface of the tooth was intimate and chemically bonded properly. This becomes very important in, in implant restorations, right? If you're doing implant restorations, you need a milled monolithic arch of teeth. You don't wanna worry about teeth popping or fracturing off of the restoration. This is very, very important, especially in all on four, all on six cases. And you can see that here, when you have this large, large, large monolithic arch of teeth, much stronger than individual carded. Is it possible to scan edentulous soft tissue? Yes, it is. You can do this today efficiently, effectively, and predictably. I'm here to tell you that. I'm here to show you that on one of my patients that you're seeing here inside the computer monitor. And you can see how effectively it is scanning the soft tissue. And there's new artificial intelligence from 3Shape called AI 2.0, that's helping render more success with these edentulous scans, and it is possible. You can do this today. Now, the mandible is much more difficult than the maxilla. As you can see, the difference from a time-lapse standpoint, how much more efficiently I'm scanning the maxillary arch. However, it can be done. 
And Dr. Lucio LaRusso, who has the scan strategy and has done so much research with respect to mucostatic impressions versus intraoral oral scanning and mucocompressive impressions. And he's shown accuracy and trueness variations between the intraoral scans and the conventional impressions. And I suggest you to look at his research. And 80% of patients choose digital impression versus conventional and 88% of clinicians choose digital impressions versus conventional, right? There's a lot of studies out there in various publications that verify that digital is more accurate, right? Now, with removable, just because you can do this, doesn't mean that you'll never have to do this or never have to do this, right? So we can scan intraoral soft tissue today. We can get that mucostatic impression of that oral situation. But we can also scan our alginates or we could scan our final impressions or take impressions inside dentures. You can do that today, all of these workflows. And the very much same applies for the mandible. Just because we can do one doesn't mean we never have to do the other. And that's one of the biggest take home messages here today. When everyone talks about digital dentures, immediately think of intraoral scanning. Okay? Digital dentures is all options. Right? You don't have to just intraoral scan. Okay? And like I said, all options, wax rims, wash impressions and wax rims, Gothic arch tracers, existing reference dentures, right? These are all ways we can rehabilitate an edentulous patient, okay? Lots of different ways that we can manufacture. Printing, milling, a combination of both, right? There's technology out there that's going so fast, we almost can't even keep up, right? And I've done a lot of different studies different evaluations of different materials from different systems. Um, also, the one that's not on here is the Lucitone 199 print uh, with Densply Serona and the carded teeth. Uh, the monolithic Ivotion is not compared in this evaluation that I did. This was a conjunction collaboration with Mr. Lee Culp, CDT. Uh, and what we did was we compared different materials, the shades, the shapes, the tooth positions, as well as the overall aesthetics. And you can see the Top picture here is a printed denture, and the lower image is a milled monolithic denture. So we definitely can see the difference of the surface texture, opalescence, translucency, right? But does the average patient see the difference? Probably not, right? But again, it's how the materials perform long term is, is really what makes the biggest difference. So again, lots of different ways of manufacturing. For me and my practice, I use the Ivotion Denture System. And the Ivotion Denture System has various ways of manufacturing. We can do carded teeth, so bonding individual carded teeth to a milled base. You can do the oversized milling process where you have a monolithic arch of teeth, monolithic denture, mill those each to 80%, bond those together, put them back in the mill and get a full denture. And it looks like this when it comes directly out of the mill. Ivotion Dent Multi now, so there's a polychromatic milled double crosslink PMMA material. And then the most revolutionary milled PMMA product is the Ivotion. This is a one piece monolithic digital denture and it's made out of one disc. And I was fortunate to be part of product development of this product, uh, working with the research and development and product development teams. Also, I was fortunate to work with Ivoclar Vivident to launch this product at the Chicago Midwinter Meeting in 2020, as you can see here. So when we look at Ivotion, it's one disc, one milling process, and one monolithic denture, right? So when we talk about a digital workflow and true digital seamlessness and efficiency, what could be more simple than one denture, 
one milling process, one disc, right? So when you look at the disc, it's a 98 by 38 premium PMMA based material, highly cross-linked PMMA tooth material, and a truly monolithic, seamless monolithic stress-free chemical bond, right? Microscopically, there is no linear de deviation, right? It is one monolithic structure. But I'm sure you're asking yourself now, how is this possible? How? How can you get the pink and the white so perfect out of one disc? That's from the shell geometry, okay? The shell geometry is the key to amazing efficiency inside the iVotion disc. And when you look at this inside the three shape dental system software, you can see that that is the disc. That is the monolithic disc where the ribbon lies is the white and the pink differentiation, just like you see here in the disc. So in the disc, you can see where the second molar, first molar, first bicuspid, second bicuspid, cuspid lateral central, right? This is cutting the disc in half. And then you can see that on the software side of where that ribbon lies. And you can move and transition and manipulate these teeth in various different directions. In our initial studies, we were able to realize over 88% of all the denture cases that we tested with this disc. So it's not one size fits all, it's one size fits almost all, or one size fits most. Our goal as dental professionals is to rehabilitate edentulous patients and making people smile, right? Happy patients, that's the goal. Plain and simple. So let's take a deep dive now look into digital denture workflows, right? Because that's what you're here to see is now, now that I've shown you the technology, now that I've talked to you about the technology, help you understand the technology, now we have to talk about how we implement this technology with respect to the workflows, right? So your standard workflow is wax rim, and we'll deep dive into this in, in just a moment, right? Impressions, custom tray, final impressions, you can pour a stone cast, you can print base plates to make a wax rim. There's your wax rims. You do your wax rim registration, do a functional try-in, and then you deliver. For appointment with the Gothic Arch Tracing, which is my personally preferred workflow with respect to edentulous patients, where we take alginate impressions, centric tray, a UTS CAD registration, and then we fabricate what's called a 3D bite plate to take a gothic arch tracing. We then do a mono block try-in and then deliver a final denture. We could also do this in three appointments doing two alginates, centric tray, UTS CAD, then taking all that information and going right to try-in. And if we want to take a wash impression inside the try-in, we can do that and then go to a try and make our modifications, scan all that information in, deliver a final denture. Immediates, we scan patients with intraoral scanners or you can pour alginates. You do a live smile design, okay? That's very powerful technology and we'll talk about that. And we deliver a final restoration at the time of extraction and then we do another restoration once a patient's healed. Reference dentures, taking impressions inside existing dentures, new centric relation records, scanning all that information and designing a denture. And we'll talk about this workflow as well. So now that you've seen the workflows at a glance, let's actually do some clinical case presentations. So when we look at removable prosthetics, you can understand that it's oral engineering, right? Because what's the difference between construction and dentures, or dentistry for that matter? Nothing. You have to evaluate, survey the lot. Let's talk about building a house. Survey the lot, draw up plans, get the plans approved, dig the footing, pour the foundation, build the house, so on and so forth. Well, what's the difference between that and removable? Survey the lot is 
clinical examination, intraoral examination, right? Then coming up with a plan. How are you going to rehabilitate this patient? What workflow are you going to use? Right? There's your plan. Then you dig your, found your footing. That's either preliminary impressions or intraoral scans. But there's, there's planning involved and there's really no difference. And, and when we look at this edentulous intraoral situation, right? How do we plan this? We look at the shape of the alveolar ridge. We look at the muscles of mastication. We look at the uh, sublingual tissues. We look at the keratinized tissue. We look at the bone quality and quantity, right? We look at positioning. We look at jaw classifications. We look at all these things before we decide how and why we're going to rehabilitate a patient. Because the goal is to go from here do a try and evaluate, make changes. There's a lot of changes that made to this try and which you can see here in the final, right? And that's our goal and we need to plan. And, and a try and if we're comparing it to construction, is the first set of blueprints, right? Move the window, move the door, move the whole house forward, move it backwards, do this, do that, right? The same thing applies in removable or in dentistry, okay? And in removable, we have a lot of tools for success. Good foundation, right? Nice alginate impressions or intraoral scans or reference dentures. Using a papillometer, centric tray, vertical dimension gauges, right? Now again, whether you have an alginate that you scan or you pour a stone model, you can make a custom tray and take your final impressions. So again, if you want to do digitally, you could scan those impressions. If you want to pour the impressions and scan those models, you can do that too. Or you can just scan the alginates, make the custom trays digitally, then take your final impressions and pour a master cast and make a set of wax rims. Right? So let's go back. Making your custom tray, taking your final impression, and then wax rims. And then we take our registration, right? We measure vertical dimension of occlusion, vertical dimension of rest, all of these important factors to make sure that the patient is properly restored, right? We use what's called a con meteor VDO gauge. Um, this is a lovely tool that uses the golden proportions from the interpupillary line to the commissure of the lip. And you can see here, I'm having the patient exercise her phonetics 55, 66, Frank, Victor, Church, Mississauga, Judge, right? To make sure that we have between two to four millimeters, I like to be three to four millimeters, of freeway space between the teeth. Right. So we measure occlusal planes. How do we do this in, in conventional with digital, right? We're evaluating the bipupillary line, right, and camper's plane, the allotragus line, which we'll show you in just a moment, right? And this is how we utilize wax rims to ensure that our registration is going to render a good success inside the trion, right? You can see camper's plane. And you can see the lip support, right? How we evaluate lip support, positioning of the maxillary teeth. But going back again, think of all of this information that we have to gather in order to make sure that we have good occlusal planes, good measurements, right? Going back again, lip support, right? Contouring the wax rim, getting all these things perfect. And then the final evaluation, just give me a nice high smile. And then we mark our canine points. We mark our midlines, right? All these things are transcribed information onto the wax rims. And I also like to use a form selector. So this measures the inter -ala width, which gives us a differentiation of small, medium, and large. And then we can pick our tooth molds. So just to go back, again, this device is called a form selector in the ALA meter, 
or the facial meter, and that measures your inter ala width, which will determine small, medium, and large, and help you choose the denture teeth. Digital denture teeth, you have the SR Phenaris, you have SDCL, you have Blue Line, there's lots of different denture libraries out there from Vita, Colzer, Densply Serona, Candelore, lots of different libraries out there. You could take a wash impression inside the wax rim and scan that, or you could scan the two stone models in the wax rim. And you could scan those with intraoral scanners or desktop scanners. Both of those workflows can be done in this methodology. Okay? And you can see now that in the software how we can bring those visualizations back in to help us set our teeth. And you can see the center line, the canine points, the high smile, and you can see all that on the computer. So when we bring this in a dental system, which is the design software from 3Shape, you can now see that wax rim and you can see where the high smile line is, the canine points, the occlusal plane, right? You can see the length of the teeth, you can see the width of the teeth, the buccal corridors, right? When we do this conventionally, once we strip all that wax away, we can't see this information. We can't see the center of the ridge when we have wax all over the center of the ridge. Right? Even good model analysis, it's still difficult to see the center of the ridge. Digitally, we can do that. We can morph the teeth, make them longer, make them shorter, make them broader. Right? Rotating the occlusal plane, like you're going to see here. So many amazing things can be done with digital. We then do what's called a functional try-in. So these are 3D printed monolithic tooth shade material. And what that does is it now allows us to evaluate fit, form, function, aesthetics, and phonetics with teeth. Because as much as we spend time scribing lines, making our wax rims perfect, doing all of those things, unless there's teeth with embrasures and gingiva, and nice palatal contours around denture teeth. We really can't differentiate and evaluate true aesthetics, right? And look what we can do in the functional triant. The midline's off by one millimeter, okay? The buccal corridor needs a little bit of changing. I would like to open the vertical another millimeter, okay? All those changes are easily communicated. Let's go back for a minute. Now think about this. With this functional try-in, you don't have to worry about telling the patient, don't, don't bite down too hard, you're gonna move all the teeth. Or don't worry, it'll fit better when it's finished. These digital monolithic try-ins fit the same as the final restoration. So you're now also doing a try-in with confidence, right? Confidence, bite down, bite as hard as you want. Check the excursions, eccentric and centric. So again, when we look at this functional try-in, you can see what we're doing. No different than what we do in conventional removal, just different materials, allows us to do this process more efficiently, effectively, and predictably. So once we've evaluated what changes we wanna make, you could also take a wash impression at this time if you weren't happy with the fit, or you could take a new centric relation record as well. All that information can be scanned into the software. If you need to move the midline one millimeter, you can move the midline. If you need to close the vertical, open the vertical, rotate a tooth, move a tooth, change the occlusal plane, all that can be done within 10 to 15 minutes. And I want you to think about that for a moment, and we talked earlier about bilateral balancing individual teeth on a block of wax, think of this conventionally, if the midline is off significantly by one to two millimeters, that requires a dental technician to remove all of the 28 teeth and reset them all to that new midline position. And we can't guarantee it's going to be exactly the same occlusal plane, the same position of the centrals, the laterals, the canines, right? 
But digitally, if we're moving and rotating that midline, we maintain all the aesthetics and all the tooth positions because they're locked into that full arch. For this case, we milled this out of the monolithic Ivo Ocean. And you can see the results here directly outside of the Progamil PM7. For the upper as well as the lower. Now, with respect to digital dentures, especially monolithic dentures, I think it's important to create surface textures, interproximal embrasures, individualizations with diamond discs, right? Labial developmental grooves, horizontal grooves, all those things that make a big difference to the overall aesthetic appearance, giving it that true to nature look, right? A nice high quality pumice and polish, okay? The high shine here is the universal polishing base, but you can see the surface texture and the, the, the detail and the high polish. Look at the gingival margins, right? Seamless around the teeth. This is the results in the oral cavity and you can see very, very nice surface texture, very nice high quality detail. And when we look at how this patient initially presented to the practice, right, with a 42 year old worn out denture, and we were able to change that significantly with digital denture technology. But again, following the rules and principles and philosophies and foundations of removable prosthodontics, right? Vertical dimensions, tooth positions, occlusal schemes, measurements, camphor's plane, occlusal plane, midline, high smile line, right? Phonetics. But this patient's living her best life. Very happy about the results. So, what about a three appointment workflow? When you look at this patient, and I made this denture nine years ago, and when we look at the existing situation, we can see, sure, he's overclosed, he's worn out his occlusion, right? But the patient's chief complaint was only the fractured lateral incisor. Wasn't that he couldn't eat, wasn't that the dentures don't fit, right? Strictly aesthetic complaint, but I know and we all know that we need to rehabilitate this patient with a new set of dentures. But again, like you just saw earlier, multiple measurements, vertical tools, fox planes, right? Facial meters, ala meters, scribing lines, right? So I ask you, if you have this type of initial situation, that's within normal limits. Not someone that's extremely prognathic or retrognathic, something like this within normal limits. Why would you throw all this information in the garbage? Why would you just dismiss all of this? Right? And no one understand that a person that never made a mistake has never tried anything new. And Albert Einstein said that. And when we look at these three patients here, right? You look at their existing situation, and their new situation, right? And these workflows can also be done in three appointments. And, and this is what's called the reference denture, okay? And the reference denture is the pathway to digital dentures. If you're one of those clinicians out there that's avoiding doing dentures, or you're having a lot of challenges with your dentures, this is a workflow that I recommend that you really embrace. Okay, and we're gonna go through this with you now. So we start with the initial situation and we can see lack of buccal corridor, overclosed, aesthetics within normal limits. Then we see what we did in the try-in, but we looked at the try-in, we made changes and then we delivered, right? So let's go through this now. And as I mentioned earlier, information is key. And with the reference denture, it's important to evaluate the existing situation, right? Fifth form function, aesthetics, phonetics, centric relation, vertical dimension, right? 
But when we look at every one of these dentures, they all have unique value. Whether it is good, better, bad, or indifferent, there's still value and information inside these dentures. Okay? So we start by taking vertical dimension and we evaluate the existing situation of the tooth position, tooth size, plane of occlusion, vertical dimension, all those things are evaluated. From there, we take closed mouth functional final impressions inside the patient's dentures, right? And we do that utilizing polyvinyl siloxane material, okay? And have the patient exercise functional movements. So we do the maxillary border, the mandibular border, and then we take wash impressions inside of that. So this is using either monophase, depending on the borders or heavy body. If you're extremely underextended, I recommend heavy body. If your borders are within normal limits, I recommend monophase. Then the light body wash is done with standard light body material. This is virtual from Ivoclar Vivident. So taking a closer look, if you really think about this, it's really no different than a custom tray. It's a custom tray that the patients anatomically, physiologically, and neuromuscularly become adapted to for a period of time. And very much the same in the mandible. So you can see the results of these two impressions and how we rendered that final impression inside the existing denture. And this is now can be scanned with the intraoral scanner or a lab scanner, okay? So, but think about this. If you have intraoral scanner, you're now in the operatory, you've taken closed mouth functional final impressions, you've taken a new centric relation record, you've scanned all that information and digitally sent that to a digital lab, right? But if you don't have an intraoral scanner and you still want to do this workflow, treat it like a reline or a rebase. Have the lab pick up the reference dentures in the morning, scan them, and then bring them back to you for the patient to pick them up at the end of the day, then proceed to the next part of the appointment. And you can see now inside the software how we have all that information of this denture now at our, you can now see we have all of this information of the existing situation, the existing denture, right? And we can bring it in and out and we can copy the midline, move the midline, move the labial support, move the plane of occlusion, rotate the plane of occlusion, morph and scale the teeth to be the same, right? Rotations, all these things can be done digitally. So just to show you some real time of the scans, look at the upper and the lower of that impression that I'm scanning here and how fast the TRIO software is scanning that impression to digitize it. It's incredible. It really and truly is incredible of how fast the bite scanning process, right? Scanning the bite, either intraorally or extraorally, right? This technology is absolutely incredible and very high accuracy and detail. So again, like earlier, we make our changes inside the software, rotating the occlusal plane, changing the labial positioning of the teeth, all those types of things are done, and then coming back again to that monoblock trion, right? Monolithic tooth shade material trion, right? So we can evaluate in our functional trion, fit, form, function, aesthetics, and phonetics. And when we look at this, we can see the midline is off. We can see that we have to open the vertical slightly. But again, that's why we do a try-in. We evaluate these things, just like I talked about earlier with construction and a set of blueprint. This is the try-in for you to try things and look at things and evaluate things and change things. Right? So we can make those necessary changes, whether it's a midline, vertical dimension, new impressions, new bites, all that information, whatever changes need to be made, we can do that in the software. So for this case, again, we open the vertical by one and a half millimeters, broaden the buckle corridor, 
Then we milled this out of the monolithic I've ocean and finalized our case. And we can see here a very nice aesthetic result, a nice harmonious result, nice occlusal plane, positioning of the maxillary and mandibular teeth, nice aesthetics, very nice mold selection as well for this particular patient. So let's recap. What have we done? We've taken closed mouth functional final impressions inside the patient's existing dentures and taken a new centric relation record. Why do you think this workflow is one of the most predictable workflows, highest patient acceptance, and most reduced amount of post-operative adjustments? Because you're changing the things that need to be changed, but you're maintaining and or improving some of the factors that the patient presents with. And this is because the patient walks in with this denture and they're very happy with the overall aesthetics maybe. Maybe they like the vertical, the tooth position, they're happy with those things. And neuromuscularly, right, and physiologically, they're adapted to these dentures. So we take all the information, we make it better, right, and then we really make it better, right? We improve the quality of the material, we improve the aesthetics, we improve the vertical dimension. Look at the difference from point A to point C, right, because B is the middle. Big difference, and this is all done in three appointments. So we've launched the official scan strategy together with 3Shape on how to scan these reference dentures as well as a workflow view at a glance. I was honored and privileged to be asked to develop this scan strategy alongside 3Shape. You can download the link on 3Shape's website for the official scan strategy. What about immediate dentures? Digital immediate dentures. This is where I feel this technology is absolutely incredible. Being able to intraoral scan the edentulous, or partially edentulous terminal dentition situation and render a digital denture. No more alginates worrying about displacing the teeth, extracting teeth prematurely with alginate material. Doing a smile design right, to increase patient acceptance, patient satisfaction, and having all of that information, the digital records, it's very, very powerful. So we, we talked about this earlier, these patients that all have fear and fear of dentistry, and we can see these immediate situations. And I want you to listen to this patient. This was, I would have to say in my career, probably the most powerful, impactful case that I've ever done. 23-year-old patient that we rehabilitated with digital immediate dentures. It was one of the first done with the Ivotion denture system and the Ivotion dent multi-material. And Andrea is living her best life. So begin with the end in mind, right? Where do we put the maxillary central incisor position? Right? But what does smile design also allow us to do? Position teeth within the golden proportions right, interpupillary line, alas of the nose, midline, and we can now digitally show this patient superimposed over his existing situation what his final situation could look like, right? Size, shape, tooth position, color, right? This is very, very, very powerful for an edentulous terminal dentition patient. But also what we need to evaluate from an oral engineering standpoint with immediates and terminal dentition is the existing situation by taking photographs. And when you look at this, you can see how class two this patient is, right? But is he prognathic in the maxilla or is it retrognathic in the mandible? And the only way to truly evaluate that is with cephalometric scans. And cephalometric scans we take the S and A, the S and B to find the average, which is the A and B, which determines, which will determine which of the arches need the class correction. Whether you need a maxillary Lafort, whether we need a mandibular advancement, or if it's within normal limits, we can do an aviolectomy and correct the class, which is what we did for this case. And you can see our pre-surgical planning, how we've done this inside the software, 
having the visualization of the existing situation. You could not do this conventional because once you extract those teeth off the stone cast, they're gone, right? I want you to see this inside the software now, how I can reposition and merge the existing scan to the new design teeth, right? Bringing the arches forward, backwards, up, down, but you can see the initial situation lying inside of this design, right? Again, conventionally, once we extract those teeth, they're gone. Sure, you can do a split cast mounting, but you can never bring it in and out of where you want your new proposed design to be. You could print diagnostics of the models to better communicate with the surgeon. You can print a duplicate surgical guide. We milled this denture. This is the oversized milling process that we did for this patient. It's a two-step denture. Milling the base and teeth rough and bonding them together. And here we are two weeks post-op. And we can see the class correction. We can see the nice anatomically correct occlusion now. And we can see how we corrected the class and how we position this patient's teeth in a more anatomical and physiological position. Because we began with the end in mind. We knew what we wanted, where we wanted, and how we wanted to do it. And we used digital technology and principles of philosophies to rehabilitate this patient. So I want to take you through a patient's digital journey from initial rehabilitation to final definitive restoration. This patient was treated with digital immediate dentures for the first portion of her treatment. And I'm going to go over that with you. We can see the initial situation. Patient is missing multiple teeth. Patient is overclosed and patient has uh, alveolar extrusions in the mandible. So we start the case by doing a smile design. And with smile design, we're able to evaluate the size of the teeth, shape of the teeth, aesthetics of the teeth, right? And we can show this to the patient prior to the finalization, right? And have a discussion about how the teeth look. So, we scan this patient utilizing the TRIOS intraoral scanner to create a mucostatic situation of the intraoral environment. And what I'm here to tell you today with respect to intraoral scanning for terminal dentition or immediate dentures is it does reduce post-operative adjustments exponentially. It really and truly does because you are capturing all that information in a static state. You're not over compressing the soft tissue or the alveolar bone, moving the teeth, especially mobile teeth. These scans are being done in a nice static and controlled situation. We've seen a significant reduction in post-operative adjustments as well for immediates. This week alone, I saw five patients that were rehabilitated with this technology and a variant, an average of two adjustments per patient. And I, when I say two adjustments, I speak in two separate areas, not coming back two times. And just like we talked about in the last case, having the ability to merge the existing situation in and around the design is paramount. So we design the denture, we mill the denture, teeth are extracted, dentures inserted, and you can see the results. And we can see where the mandibular incisors are on this interim transitional prosthesis and compared to the initial situation. The initial situation, these teeth are super erupted, alveolar extrusion, right? Look at how we've now positioned the teeth more harmonious. We did a little bit of alveoplasty in both arches. But to go from the initial situation to this in two appointments, and this is one week post-op, it's incredible. So what we then do for this patient is we 3D print a copy of her existing situation. So you can see on the computer monitor, I've scanned 
her interim transitional immediate denture, which has had multiple occlusal adjustments throughout the last six to nine months and multiple tissue conditioners to compensate for the alveolar resorption and soft tissue remodeling. So those dentures are 3D printed. We then take the closed mouth functional foul impressions inside those existing dentures, scan all that information. So we're starting digitally, we're finishing digitally. So when we look at this existing situation, again, we're taking closed mouth functional foul impressions. Ooh, E, tongue out, move your tongue side to side, right? Swallow and close. There's the upper impression, the lower impression. You can see that's in the 3D printed duplicate of her immediate. So again, we took her immediate denture, took closed mouth functional final impressions inside a 3D printed copy. So we can see here now I've scanned that information with the three shape trios. So you could see it's the existing immediate denture, but scanned 360, 3D printed, and then a wash impression was done then that's all scanned. And then we align that all into the software and design a new digital denture from that point. Right? So you can see me merging and aligning the existing situation within that design. So I can see how and where I need to move the midline. Where do I need to change the vertical? What are the things that I need to do? And then we 3D print that functional triumph, right? And we talked about that earlier. And inside that functional try-in, we can make the necessary changes. And we mill this out of the monolithic I've ocean denture. And we get these beautiful results. Right? This patient's very happy with her final rehabilitation. And you can see really beautiful surface textures, high quality detail, nice incisal position. But we're able to do this because we did a try-in and we made the necessary changes, right? Look at the occlusal plane, the tooth positioning. And when we look at, right, the initial situation to where this patient is today, this is really beautiful rehabilitation. What about partials, right? Partials is also an amazing indication for intraoral scanning because, again, we're taking a static scan of the positioning of the teeth in the oral environment. Think about when you take a mucocompressive and pressure-loaded impression on teeth, right? You're slightly displacing them. I can't tell you how incredible digitally manufactured partial denture frameworks fit. Absolutely incredible. And this case was done with Dr. Bedrosian, uh, Prosthodontist out of California. And we designed the cast mesh framework. This patient actually had a maxillary implant bridge that failed, uh, unfortunately, due to his bone loss. But one of the implants was still a good bone volume around it, bone quality quantity surrounding that implant fixture. So we kept that and Dr. Bedrosian placed a Novolock attachment I 3D printed the models and we did a 3D printed metal framework, which is from 3D RPD. It's selective laser sintering technology. I brought all that information into the dental system and I designed a monoblock try-in and then I conventionally placed wax. So we print these models, articulate them, and then we wax this all into the framework. So Dr. Bedrosian does the try-in evaluates fit, form, function, aesthetics, and phonetics. And from there, we duplicate that printed model, and then we conventionally process and inject that, that denture, and we trim and polish that. And you can see the final results. And also, this was done with a uh, pickup of the Novolock attachment intraorally. So what does a workflow of the future look like, right? The removable metamorphosis. And, and I save this for last because I know everybody wants to see and wants to talk about intraoral scanning, right? So here is my patient that you saw earlier, Judy. This is her intraoral scans. This is the edentulous situation, 
right? We've scanned her upper, scanned her lower, and then we did the centric tray. So the centric tray, again, is an edentulous triple tray that you use to take preliminary vertical dimension of occlusion, okay? So we evaluate that with the UTS CAD. So the UTS CAD now, which is incorporated into the centric tray to evaluate by pupillary line and the camper's plane. So you're seeing at a glance now what that looks like extraorally and intraorally. All of that information is scanned into the software. So we've scanned the upper edentulous arch, scanned the lower edentulous arch, scanned the centric tray in our hands, okay? And then we've aligned all that data to render an initial situation. Okay, so because the number one question with this workflow is how do you get the bike, right? That's how, is the centric tray. We also use the facial meter, right? The intra-ala meter, right? To measure the width of the teeth. We use the Fenaris teeth for this case, which we use a medium soft mold. So you take all that information and then you bring that into the software and now you're designing a digital denture, okay? on those edentulous scans at that preliminary vertical dimension of occlusion. You do your monoblock try-in, your functional try-in, because again, you're going to evaluate anatomically and physiologically, how close were you and the dental technician? Because again, you don't have lip support, you don't have freeway space, you're just taking vertical dimension with a centric tray, but again, you're using the teeth to evaluate the existing situation. Right? So how far labial, how far buckle, buckle corridor, look at in this case, move the midline by two millimeters to the right. Okay? Bring the teeth palatally, they're too far labial. Increase the length of the clinical crown in the maxillary anteriors. And if I'm doing this workflow, I would take a wash impression. That's my philosophy because I personally and truly feel that a true suction border molded is done with functional closed mouth final impressions because we can capture anatomically, physiologically, and neuromuscularly the existing situation under the patient's functional movements and bite force. So we scan all that information in, we make the necessary changes, we mill that in the program mill, and again, you can see the results. And we did various workflows on this patient, including the four appointment, the three appointment, direct to try in, three appointment edentulous workflow, reference denture, all different types of uh, workflows to show you digital denture excellence. So everybody's always asked, well, where do I go from here? Right? All this information is great, but how do I learn more? Where do I start? Well, that's why I created Learn with the Denture Center.ca. During the pandemic, I couldn't do live hands-on courses. I couldn't travel around and lecture. So what did we do? We built this library of digital denture education, and I'm gonna show that to you right now. Learn with the Denture Center. Why did we create this platform? We created this platform to create the necessary education for one of the largest growing aspects in dentistry today, which is digital denture. We educate you from a clinical standpoint, from a scanning standpoint, and a technical standpoint, including design and manufacturing of various digital denture technologies in the industry today. We utilize three-shape trios, as well as the three-shape lab scanners. We're gonna show you anything and everything that you need to know about digital removable today. Looking here through our platform, you can see the high quality of videos that are produced in a successive modular manner. You can also see how this is all laid out in your learning dashboard on all the various videos that you have in your learning library that you can watch time and time and time and time again. So you can continue to educate yourself to exceed excellence in digital removable. We have clients all over the world that are subscribing to our Learn website that cannot say enough amazing things. What am I seeing missing in the industry today? People are not understanding the workflow from start to finish, not creating order forms correctly, not scanning dentures or edentulous arches with the proper scan strategy, 
not understanding how to take all that information and bring it into the design software and understanding the design software inside and out. It is paramount that you understand all these aspects to be successful in digital denture technology. And that's why we created Learn With The Denture Center. Come learn with us, come exceed excellence, and let's change dentures together. So again, please connect with me on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, use my hashtags. I want to connect with you. Check out my learning platform. There's so much clinical and technical knowledge, scanning knowledge on there as you saw in the video. I would love for you to check out my learning platform. And I want to exceed excellence together with each and every single one of you. That is my goal. I want to maximize your potential and I want you to increase your efficiency to the high level because it's you versus you. You have the choice each and every single day to be better than you were yesterday. You have the choice to be the best version of yourself. So I will tell you this again, look in the mirror, it's you versus that person, you versus you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are watching this in the world. Thank you.